today uh, I would like to tell you something about our uh, quite recent uh, research uh, on the neuromuscular junction, um, what happens to the neuromuscular junction when it is poisoned by uh, neurotoxins of animal uh, origin, and uh, uh, so um, a study on the degeneration of the junction that is then uh, followed by regeneration. And uh, I would like also to emphasize that uh, the our, our data and our ongoing research, uh, we hope, uh, will have important uh, implication also for uh, therapeutic approaches uh, in uh, many neuropathies. Uh, um, so uh, we, are, uh, we work on the neuromuscular junction. I think that uh, uh, you uh, all know that uh, the neuromuscular junction is uh, the site of transmission, uh, is the site where an electric impulse uh, traveling along the nerve is converted into a chemical signal, thus triggering the, the muscle contraction. Uh, the neuromuscular junction is um, uh, a tripartite synapse. It is composed of a, a, a presynaptic nerve terminal uh, that is uh, just opposed to the um, postsynaptic uh, uh, muscle fiber. And then the, the, the third component uh, um, is uh, represented by glial cells, the so-called Schwann cells. Schwann cells uh, uh, which produce myelin and rope the axon, uh, allowing the, um, the conductance of the impulse. And then we have these, uh, these uh, uh, terminal Schwann cells that do not produce myelin, but are really in close contact uh, with the nerve, and they have uh, an important role not only in the uh, stability of the junction and its development, but uh, uh, when the terminal is injured, these Schwann cells uh, uh, acquire a very um, in, uh, are very very important for the for uh, uh, they help in nerve regrowth. Uh, due to its uh, um, exposure and uh, the lack of a, a, a protective barrier, the neuromuscular junction is the target of many toxins, but it, uh, it can also be uh, injured by uh, mechanical traus traumas, by chemicals, and uh, there are also uh, some uh, um, autoimmune diseases uh, where uh, the, the, the neuromuscular junction is uh, targeted by uh, complexes between uh, autoantibodies uh, and uh, the complement system. And uh, um, um, uh, here, uh, this, uh, this slide shows you um, how the neuromuscular junction appear by EF. So uh, these are the, the three uh, components of the neuromuscular junction. Uh, by using an antibody against the vesicular acetylcholine transporter, you can stay in the presynaptic element. And by using a, a snake neurotoxin, alpha bangrotoxin, that specifically binds to the um, nicotinic uh, receptors for acetylcholine, you can stay the postsynaptic membrane. And here in green, you can see uh, Schwann cells. Uh, these uh, pictures are taken from uh, mice muscle mice transgenic uh, muscles from <coughs> transgenic mice that express uh, uh, the green fluorescent protein in the cytoplasm of Schwann cells, both the myelinating, that uh, are these cells that rope the axon, and the terminal Schwann cells that are in close contact with the presynaptic uh, uh, site. Our laboratory has uh, been always uh, interested in, the, uh, in toxins, and in particular in uh, neurotoxins, uh, the famous uh, uh, botulinum neurotoxins and uh, the tetanus neurotoxin that all target the presynaptic nerve terminal. And uh, uh, but starting with my PhD, we started a new line of research uh, based on uh, the investigation of the molecular mechanism of action of a group of snake neurotoxins and spider neurotoxins that, uh, sorry, uh, also uh, affect uh, the, the presynaptic element of the neuromuscular junction. Uh, um, Snake bite and venoming has uh, uh, 
recently been included by the World Health Organization in the list of uh, neglected disease. Uh, uh, snake bite uh, affect million uh, people each year. Uh, these people live in uh, um, rural and poor countries and uh, uh, very often the bite leads to uh, very um, severe sequelae that eventually can lead to, to death due to the, the lack of uh, first uh, aid. Um, so we, we, we work with mainly uh, with the two classes of animal neurotoxins. Uh, we work with a spider toxin, which is called alpha latrotoxin, and with a group of snake neurotoxins that we call SPANS. Uh, these toxins, as, uh, as I told you before, target the presynaptic element of the neuromuscular junction and leave the postsynaptic uh, uh, site unaffected. And they cause paralysis of the neuromuscular junction by different biochemical mechanisms. And this, is, this paralysis <coughs> is then uh, um, followed with time by um, nerve terminal degeneration. And uh, the, 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 the main changes that take place uh, at the presynaptic nerve terminal that, that are um, a calcium of overload, uh, mitochondrial impairment, cytoskeletal degradation, resemble to uh, um, features that are observed in many neurodegenerative diseases. Um, going uh, more in, data, in detail into the mechanism of action of this neurotoxin, starting from latrotoxin. Latrotoxin is the main component uh, of the venom of the, of the black widow spider. It is a typical poor forming toxins. It uh, targets the presynaptic nerve terminal and inserts into the lipid bilayer by forming a tetramer. This tetramer makes a pore that is uh, permeable to cations. So the main consequence is uh, a massive calcium influx within the, ter the nerve terminal. That, uh, trigger uh, a, a massive neuroexocytosis not followed by retrieval and uh, with time to neurodegeneration. What about snake neurotoxins? Okay, so uh, uh, we work with uh, a group of snake neurotoxins that uh, are PLA2. It means that once bound to the presynaptic member, these toxins start hydrolyzing phospholipids that are present in the bilayer and generate uh, um, lysospecies, which, uh, which are lysolipids and fatty acids that, as you can see from this picture, have a very different uh, uh, shape uh, with respect to the, the original uh, phospholipid in, in the bilayer. So the accumulation of these uh, lysoproducts uh, force the membrane curvatures uh, leading to, na to a, stimu a, a stimulation in the neuroexocytosis. So following intoxication, uh, the, the terminal start uh, um, releasing um, a lot of neurotransmitter and for the same biophysical and topological reasons, a, a, a membrane configuration that favors exocytosis inhibits the reverse process that is endocytosis, that is a, a crucial uh, process for uh, uh, vesicle recycling. So uh, due to this PLA2 activity, these terminals uh, um, release uh, uh, vesicles that cannot be recycled. So the, the, the net result is uh, uh, the paralysis of the neuromuscular junction. Okay, and uh, uh, moreover, um, the, the, the PLA2 activity of this neurotoxin on the uh, plasma membrane uh, generates uh, transient lipidic pores that allow a massive uh, increase, toxic increase uh, in cytosolic calcium. And this is the major trigger of neurodegeneration. Okay? Um, to, to define uh, the mechanism of action of this neurotoxin, we have uh, um, used uh, um, primary cultures uh, uh, from cerebellum or from the spinal cord. What happens when these neurons are treated, are exposed with the neurotoxins? 
as you can see, uh, in a very short time, uh, there appear these uh, um, uh, membrane enlargement along new rights that we call bulges. Bulges are sites of unbalanced exocytosis and of localized calcium overload, as you can see from these pseudocolor images, where um, these are experiments on neurons loaded with FURA2, a calcium indicator, and you can see that over uh, with time, um, calcium increases specifically at the, <coughs> at the level of uh, these uh, bulges. Moreover, <coughs> Uh, bulges are also sites of uh, accumulation of uh, uh, injured mitochondria, as shown by these uh, EM and, uh, images of uh, cultured uh, cerebellar uh, neurons uh, exposed to the toxin, and the same is observed also at the neuromuscular junction. The neuromu a neuromuscular junction poisoned with one of these neurotoxin shows, uh, if you compare the two images, the control ones and the intoxicated ones, show uh, swollen mitochondria. And also you can see that the terminal is uh, devoid, almost devoid of small synaptic vesicles. Okay? Um, so, um, uh, despite a very different biochemical action, these two classes of neurotoxins paralyze, both paralyze the neuromuscular junction and uh, lead to its degeneration. And a striking feature of this neurotoxin, as you can see from this image, is that the degeneration is really restricted to the uh, presynaptic, to the button, the synaptic button, where is the ner where, whereas the nerve remains intact. And another striking feature is that with time, the, uh, um, there is a complete regeneration of the nerve terminal, both in mice and in humans. Uh, so um, this observation um, um, uh, make us think that maybe these toxins could, uh, have, could be uh, useful tools to induce an acute and localized nerve degeneration and then uh, to follow, to study in a short time window that what happens during regeneration. So uh, this toxin can now be uh, really uh, weapons, uh, instruments uh, to, to study the degeneration and uh, regeneration processes. So what are we inter interested in? We are looking at the, 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 the messengers that the three main components of the neuromuscular junction send to communicate. And so uh, we, we, we are really um, studying the crosstalk that uh, uh, takes place <coughs> among these cells with a particular uh, interest in the, the role of uh, Schwann cells and in particular the terminal Schwann cells in this uh, uh, process. Okay. So, uh, um, looking for uh, molecular mediators released uh, by uh, uh, degenerating nerve terminals uh, that could alert uh, somehow nearby cells and activate uh, a regeneration response, we, fo we, we focused on the mitochondria. Okay? Mitochondria uh, are emerging uh, as a source of molecules that uh, uh, once released outside the cells can be detected and activate immune cells in the absence and uh, induce an inflammatory response even in the absence of uh, infection. Uh, because of the endosymbiotic uh, origin of mitochondria, mitochondria uh, components share many features of uh, bacteria. Uh, they have uh, a mitochondrial DNA, DNA that is similar to the bacterial one. They have N for peptides. When these components are inside the mitochondria, they have uh, their mm, normal uh, function. But when they are released uh, outside the cells, they can be uh, considered as alarms, as danger molecules. And Schwann cells are considered immunocompetent <coughs> cells. Since they are, uh, they are not uh, um, immune cells in a, in a strict uh, uh, way, but they express uh, on their surface a large number of uh, receptors, toll-like receptors, but they are not the only ones. 
by which they could uh, bind to, uh, to these molecules and be activated, therefore uh, um, stimulating the regeneration process. And am among the, the different molecules that could uh, be released by my mitochondria, we uh, decided to, to focus on the role of reactive of oxygen species. Because besides their um, well-known role of uh, danger molecules as uh, oxidants, they are emerging, uh, um, their role in the regeneration process is emerging in uh, different experimental models from uh, uh, Xenopus to, to zebrafish. And uh, uh, among uh, ROS, um, we, we decided to investigate whether hydrogen peroxide uh, could be a putative mediator of uh, uh, intercellular signaling between the generating nerve terminal and Schwann cells because <coughs> hydrogen peroxide is uh, permeable to biological membrane. It's more stable than the other ROS species. Therefore, it represents an ideal candidate as a signaling molecule. So we decided to to test whether hydrogen peroxide is indeed uh, produced uh, in our primary neuronal cultures upon exposure with uh, the two kinds of neurotoxins. And to do this, uh, we uh, used two probes, uh, MITOPY1 and PF6, uh, um, that are uh, probes specific for hydrogen peroxide. Uh, they um, were provided by Professor Chang in, in Berkeley. And with both probes, uh, we uh, could uh, uh, detect an increase uh, with time in hydrogen peroxide uh, production in our neurons following intoxi intoxication. So neurons, uh, degenerating neurons, do produce hydrogen peroxide. And we did some experiment to, to, to exclude uh, a role of the uh, NOx uh, system in hydrogen peroxide production. So we can conclude that this hydrogen peroxide comes from uh, uh, mitochondria. Okay. The next, next question was, uh, what is the target of hydrogen peroxide released by neurons? Um, we thought uh, uh, um, Schwann cells are, are the target. So we purified the primary Schwann cells that uh, are these ones uh, from uh, rat sciatic nerve. We exposed uh, uh, Schwann cells uh, to hydrogen peroxide and we could detect uh, um, the phosphorylation of the uh, of ERK, so the, the this means the activation of the ERK signaling pa pathway in Schwann cells, both by Western blot and by uh, immunofluorescence. And ERK pathway is known to be a crucial um, uh, signaling pathway that is activated during regeneration. Okay? We then prepared co-cultures between neurons and Schwann cells. We exposed uh, neurons to, to our neurotoxins and uh, we found phospho-ERK in Schwann cells. So this means that following intoxication uh, our uh, neurons uh, release uh, molecule, messengers, mediators, that are able to trigger earth phosphorylation in nearby Schwann cells. We then moved to the in vivo uh, situation. We, uh, um, we have this uh, transgenic uh, mice line expressing the green fluorescent protein specifically in Schwann cells, so we can easily detect the neuromuscular junction. We injected uh, the toxins um, locally um, at the level of uh, the levatory aureus longus muscle, which is a very uh, thin muscle behind the ear of the mice. It's a very, is a, an ideal uh, preparation for imaging. And uh, um, we collected the muscles at different time points and we could uh, um, detect uh, ERK activation specifically in Schwann cells in toxin-treated injected muscles, whereas no activation was uh, uh, present in the control. Okay, so um, our, our data uh, tell us that uh, um, ERK signaling uh, pathway is uh, activated uh, in Schwann cells following uh, co-cultures with neurons intoxicated with the two kinds of neurotoxin. 
And uh, uh, we also know that toxins induce the release, the production and release of hydrogen peroxide by, um, um, by our neurons. So uh, what happens uh, if hydrogen peroxide is one of the mediators of ERK activation? Uh, uh, um, if uh, we treat co-cultures with catalase, which is a, a, a very large enzyme uh, which dismutases hydrogen pero peroxide and uh, uh, remains extracellularly, we should decrease uh, the level of phosphoerc activation. So if uh, hydrogen peroxide is among uh, the mediators released by intoxicating neurons and responsible for ERK activation, if I, if I inactivate uh, hydrogen peroxide with catalase, I should uh, um, measure a decrease uh, of ERK phosphorylation in uh, our samples. And that what, uh, what was what we found. Okay. Um, we then uh, um, decided to, to use catalase to test whether hydrogen peroxide uh, is uh, a crucial mediator for ERK uh, activation in one cells and for regeneration also uh, in vivo. So we took, uh, uh, we injected alpha latotoxin in the mice in the limb in the presence or absence of catalase. And then we collected muscles at different time points and we performed electrophysiological recordings. And uh, what we obtained, we, uh, by measuring the amplitude of the evoked junctional potential, we saw that uh, ma the, the, the muscles uh, pretreated with catalase, so muscles where hydrogen peroxide has been inactivated, have uh, uh, evoked junction potential of lower amplitude with respect of uh, uh, muscles treated with the salt toxin. That's meaning that by inactivating hydrogen peroxide, we have uh, a delay in nerve recovery. recovery. Okay? Uh, the, uh, the, the results uh, uh, obtained by electrophysiological um, experiments were confirmed by immunostaining. So we injected uh, uh, the lull muscles uh, with alpha latotoxin alone or we, uh, with the toxin plus catalase to monitor the degeneration and regeneration of the nerve terminal, we looked at SNAP25 staining, which is a presynaptic marker. As you can see, following a uh, toxin injection, uh, SNAP25 staining progressively decreases, indicating that the terminal is degenerating. And, there is, uh, um, and this uh, uh, degeneration is similar in the presence of ab or absence of a catalase. But what about the recovery? You <coughs> can see that uh, with the salt toxin, uh, there is a progressive recovery of SNAP25 staining, whereas in the presence of catalase, this recovery is delayed, meaning that hydrogen peroxide is an important uh, effector, stimulator of nerve regeneration. We then uh, uh, go on we, uh, and uh, try, uh, tried to to find out other mediators uh, uh, of uh, um, nerve regeneration. Uh, and we uh, checked uh, the, the, the role of other mitochondrial molecules, such as mitochondrial DNA and cytokine C. So we took uh, the neuronal supernatans um, in the treated or not with the toxins, purified the DNA, made uh, a real-time PCR uh, with primers f specific for mitochondrial genes. And what we found is, is that in, in toxins uh, treated uh, uh, neurons, there is, uh, uh, we, we find in neuronal supernatants mitochondrial DNA. The same su supernatants um, immunoprecipitated with TCA and probed with a primary antibody against cytochrome C show a clear band, indicating that also cytochrome C is released by neurons fol following intoxication. Both mitochondrial DNA and cytochrome C can induce uh, ERK phosphorylation in Schwann cells, but hydrogen peroxide uh, seems to be a major inducer, the major inducer of Schwann cell uh, activation. Uh, 
Mitochondria, um, uh, hydrogen peroxide, as I told you before, uh, is permeable to biological membranes. But mitochondrial uh, DNA and cytochrome C are not. They are normally uh, inside the mitochondria. So we uh, asked how uh, this molecule could be released outside the neurons. So uh, we found that the, the permeability transition pore is involved in the exit of mitochondrial uh, DNA and of cytochrome C from the uh, mitochondria to the uh, cell cytoplasm. Uh, uh, since uh, uh, the pretreatment of neurons with cyclosporin A, which is uh, known to, the, uh, to uh, desensitize the pore, reduces, as uh, you can see here, the amount of uh, of uh, mitochondrial DNA and of cytochrome uh, C that we could detect in neuronal supernatans. But uh, how do these alarmins <coughs> exit from neurons? Because uh, um, the LDH assay and the experiments made with calcine tell us that uh, these alarmins are released from intact membranes. Okay, so uh, we could not detect any um, LDH activity in uh, neuronal supernatans, and as you can see, no calcine loss uh, was observed uh, during intoxication. So uh, the, there should be a, a different mechanism of release of these two molecules. And so we, we, we wonder whether uh, exosomes could be uh, involved we purified the exosomes from uh, our neuronal cultures. We um, characterized them. Uh, um, uh, we, we looked at uh, proteins that are enriched in exosomes. We excluded contamination with Golgi of mitochondrial membranes. We, we checked their correct sh sh um, size and morphology by EM. And, uh, uh, we, we could detect uh, mitochondrial DNA inside exosomes. So uh, exosomes are carrier of mitochondrial uh, DNA. Uh, in these experiments, we, we, we could not detect cytochrome C inside the exosomes. Maybe this is due to um, uh, the fact that Western blot is a, a less sensitive technique with respect to, to real-time PCR. But uh, we cannot exclude that other release mechanisms could be involved in uh, um, inducing cytochrome C release from, uh, from neurons. Okay? Uh, during uh, nerve terminal ge degeneration, Schwann cells that are unstayed in, uh, uh, in Chan uh, undergo mm, very deep uh, morphological changes. During degeneration, four hours uh, um, for, uh, after latrotoxin injection, I, I hope you can see these, uh, these cells show these, uh, these sort of vacuoles in their cytoplasm that we um, uh, tried to, to, to characterize. Them. These uh, uh, structures are uh, C CD68 positive. This means that these are phagosomes. So Schwann cells start uh, engulfing the nerve terminal degree uh, debris uh, during the degeneration process. And the clearance of these uh, debris is fundamental <coughs> for the uh, following regeneration step. And then, uh, um, as you can uh, see by this uh, orthogonal projection, these uh, phagosomes contain uh, nerve terminal debris. Uh, this is uh, SNAP25 staining, a uh, presynaptin uh, mark. And so they are actively involved uh, in the clearance of the neuromuscular junction. Uh, we could detect also macrophages coming uh, to the junction, but at later turn points. So to conclude uh, for th this part, what we found uh, is that uh, uh, degenerating neurons uh, release mitochondrial alarmins. Uh, we found hydrogen peroxide, mitochondrial DNA, cytochrome C, but uh, many others un are under investigation. And these uh, um, alarmins uh, um, activate nearby cells, in particular Schwann cells, uh, 
Schwann cells respond to these mediators by activating the ERK pathway, which is a crucial pathway um, for regeneration. Among the different uh, mitochondrial alarmins measured, hydrogen peroxide appears the strongest uh, uh, inducer of uh, Schwann cell uh, um, activation. If we inactivate uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide by catalase, we delay nerve recovery. And then we observed uh, um, very uh, important changes in Schwann cell morphology and functionality um, uh, aimed at uh, uh, the clearance of uh, nerve debris during the generation to facilitate nerve regrowth. And uh, I mean, the, 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 the final message of this first part is that neurotoxins can be really powerful tools to study the process of uh, nerve degeneration and regeneration. And uh, in the end, I would like to, to, to thank uh, all people that are involved in this uh, project. Uh, this has been really a teamwork. First of all, uh, uh, Professor Montecucco, and then Elisa Samuele, who is here and is in charge of the transcriptomic uh, analysis, Michele, Irene, Chiara Mazzanti and Paolo Aretini um, at the Fondazione Pisana per la Scienza, Professor Chang uh, for uh, providing us the hydrogen peroxide probes, and Wendy Macklin and Thomas Misgill that provided us for the transgenic mice. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.